How can you use .NET Aspire together with AWS? That's what I'm going to show you in today's video, where we are going to hook up our .NET Aspire application with two services and connect it to AWS, SNS, SQS, and we're also going to integrate OpenTelemetry. First, I want to say a huge thank you to AWS for sponsoring this video and helping me bring AWS closer to the .NET community. And if you had concerns that .NET Aspire would be an Azure lock-in, well, that's simply not true because AWS and the .NET Aspire team have been working very closely together to develop a .NET Aspire integration for AWS. And I'm going to show you the results of that collaboration in today's video. And you'll actually see how easy it is to get started with AWS, spin up some actual infrastructure from your code and then use it inside of a .NET application. This is going to be our starting point. I'll have two applications, the orders API, which accepts an incoming request to create an order and queues it for it to be processed by the orders processor. So right now, my Aspire app host only contains these two projects. And our first task is going to be to define and configure the AWS services that we are going to need. So if I go ahead and look for a .NET Aspire package, and I filter this by AWS, I will find the Aspire hosting AWS package. This is what's going to let us work with AWS services inside of Aspire and easily configure some infrastructure components that we can connect to from our .NET apps. Now, there are two prerequisites for you to use this. You need to have your AWS credentials in some form on your machine. Usually, if you've logged in using the CLI, you're going to have this in a secret file. And you're also going to need Node.js to be able to use the AWS CDK. CDK is short for Cloud Development Kit, and this is their infrastructure as code offering. So the first thing you want to do is create an instance of the SDK configuration. This takes care of some building blocks that are needed to use CDK, among other things. And you're going to call the method add AWS SDK config. Additionally, you can also specify which region you want to use. Let's say I want to use US East 1. This is what I usually use inside of AWS, so I'm not going to change it for this video. So I'm not going to change it for this video. This is what's going to take care of setting up your credentials and the things you need to connect to AWS. Now you're also going to need to define some resources. And for this, I'm going to define a CDK stack. As I said, this is their infrastructure as code offering. And let's give our stack a name. I'm going to call it orders service AWS resources. We want to give this a reference to our SDK config so that it also has access to our AWS services. And finally, once I have my CDK stack, I can go and create my infrastructure components. So I can define an SQS queue, for example, by accessing my stack resource. And there's a couple of useful extension methods here that allow you to easily configure some components. So I can define an SQS queue, a Cognito user pool, a DynamoDB table, an S3 bucket, a Kinesis stream, an SNS topic, or you can define the CDK stack separately and connect it with your app host resource. So I'm going to define my SQS queue and I'm going to call this the orders queue. Then let's define the orders topic. I'll again use my CDK stack and I'm going to call add SNS topic. I'm going to call the resource the orders topics. You can also add a subscription to this topic by chaining a call to add subscription and specifying the queue that you want to subscribe to this topic. And this is going to allow me to publish my message to the orders topic and have it routed to the orders queue. Then let's think of how we want to have our references configured. The orders API has to know about the orders topic. So I'll say with reference and let's specify the orders topic. Now you also want to give it a reference to the SDK config. So I'll say with reference and let's pass in the SDK config. The order processor is just going to be polling our SQS queue for any messages. So I'm going to give it a reference to the SDK config and the SQS queue. So I'll say with reference and specify the orders queue. So with this setup in place, let's go ahead and start our Aspire app host and let's see what's going to happen on the dashboard. You're going to see our resources starting up and I want to go into the logs of our CDK stack. So let's head into the logs and here you're going to see that something is actually happening behind the scenes. So this is .NET Aspire taking our infrastructure as code config where we define an SQS queue, an SNS topic, a subscription between them and converting them into a cloud formation template that you can run on AWS to create your infrastructure. So what's going on here is first we're creating our stack inside of CloudFormation, then we're creating our queue, our topic, defining the access policy between them and configuring the subscription, but we're also getting some outputs from AWS 
One is going to be the queue URL, which we can use for polling from the SQS queue. And then we have our topic ARN, we can use to configure where we are going to publish our messages. So after this completes, you see this lock here saying CloudFormation provisioning complete. And we have our infrastructure ready to use inside of our .NET apps. So this is the first thing I wanted to highlight. You have the ability to configure your infrastructure components as code inside of your Aspire app host and have this deployed to your AWS account. Now, if you go back to the services, you'll see that the queue and the topic are now healthy. But what about the references inside of our APIs and also the order processor? So if I scroll down and we take a look at the environment variables, you can see we have the AWS region configured, but there's also this environment environment variable here. Let me switch to this view and hopefully we should be able to see this better. So I wanted to show you the AWS resources, order topics, topic ARN. So this is because we added a reference to the orders topic resource inside of our app host config. And now we have this value provided for us by .NET Aspire. The same goes for the orders processor, which has an environment variable here called AWS resources orders queue queue URL. And this points to the SQS queue that we can listen to for incoming messages. Now you also have the URL here on your CloudFormation resource, which you can click to be navigated to the AWS console. And I'm going to do that. And here's what you're going to see if you click that button. So you're going to be navigated to the CloudFormation stack that was created from our .NET Aspire application. And this contains the definitions for the resources that we configured and that we need for our application to work. There's the orders queue instance, the SN subscription between the queue and the topic, the access policy that allows the topic to send messages to the queue, and then the simple notification service topic that we can use for publish subscribe messaging. So I hope you're starting to see how we can bridge the gap from our local development with .NET Aspire into something that's more production ready. Obviously, we would need to tighten up the infrastructure as code setup here and how we apply it when we actually deploy our applications, but it's definitely exciting to have something like this present inside of the .NET ecosystem. So now that we have our resources, and if you want to, you can also navigate to the resources themselves. So here's a look at the SNS topic. You can also see we have one subscription here pointing to our SQS queue and if I go into the simple queue service you'll be able to see the queue that we just created inside of our application so you can see the name is order service AWS resources this is the name we gave to our CDK stack then there's the orders queue which is the name of our queue resource and then this part here was automatically appended nonetheless here's our SQS queue and we can use it to start sending some messages now let's see how we can do that from our .NET application and if you want to grab the source code for this video you can do so completely for free from the pinned comment that's going to be right below this video. If you recall from the Aspire dashboard, we do get some environment variables set up for us that point to the queue URL and the topic ARN. Now, how we're going to connect to this is inside of my shared library that I'm referencing from both of my .NET applications. I'm going to expose my AWS resources as a configuration object. And here, let's first define a constant is going to point to the section name that we can use to bind these values from. Let's say section name. And if you recall, the actual environment variable was AWS double underscore resources. Now we're going to define this with a colon, but then we run into a problem with defining our queue URL and the topic ARN. These are actually present inside of an object, but luckily you can define the definition of this object. And I'm going to use a queue resource with a property that's called queue URL. Let's say it has a default value of an empty string. And I'm also going to define a topic resource with a string property called topic ARN. So with this object, I'm going to be able to bind to this inside of my application settings. And I have to define a property on the AWS resource type. The first one is going to be a queue resource. And I'm going to call this the orders queue. And then I'll be able to bind to this from my app settings. Then we're going to expose a topic resource. And we're going to call this the orders topic. And this is going to match our resource names and how the environment variables are called. Next, we can bind to this from our .NET application. I'm going to go to the program file. And here you can first initialize an instance of your AWS resources. I'm going to say new AWS resources. And then I can say builder configuration. And I want to bind the section, which is AWS resources section name. We already have a constant for that. Then we're going to specify our object. And if everything is wired up correctly, the properties should have their values populated. So then we can finally use this to configure our publishers and consumers. I'm going to say bus add SNS publisher. 
the message is going to be order created event. And here I'm going to use my AWS resource object to access the orders topic and specify a topic ARN. We'll have to do the same inside of the orders processor. I'll go to the program file there, paste in the code to configure the AWS resources. And here we want to connect to our SQS queue I'll say add SQS polar. We have to specify the queue name. So I'll say AWS resources, access the orders queue and the queue URL. And let's specify an empty string as a default value. This is going to throw an exception anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And we also want to define a message handler for the order created event. We first specify the order created event handler and then the event itself. And this is going to connect these two when we receive an order created event on the queue that we configured in the polar above the message will be passed to the order created event handler so you can see how nicely everything kind of integrates together you configure your infrastructure components using the cdk the components get created when you start your application using cloud formation you get the environment variables populated and then you can use them to bind to the configuration values inside of your code now one more thing i want to show you before we start the application and test out the behavior behavior is how to set up open telemetry with AWS to kind of complete the entire setup. And I already have some open telemetry set up here. This is just configuring the service name. We also have the service defaults where we have some basic metrics and tracing setup. And let's say I want to add some NuGet packages here. I'm going to look for open telemetry and AWS. And I want to install two libraries. The first one is the official AWS instrumentation for open telemetry. It's called open telemetry instrumentation AWS. So let's install the latest version and I'm also going to install the AWS messaging telemetry open telemetry package and this lets me integrate with AWS messaging which is what I'm using for publishing and consuming my messages so with these two in place I can go back to my service defaults extensions scroll down to the metrics and here I can say add AWS instrumentation and then in the tracing setup I can also add AWS instrumentation as well as the AWS messaging instrumentation so very simple just a few lines of code and installing some libraries and now we're going to start our application and test out the complete flow what does the flow look like well we have an api endpoint it's going to process an incoming order dto and it's going to use the message publisher this is an abstraction from aws messaging to publish an order created event now notice that we're not specifying whether to publish this to an SQS queue or an SNS topic. We're doing this inside of our message bus setup where we configure where to route the specific message. The order created event is going to be routed to an SNS topic and here is the topic ARN. On the consuming side, in the orders processor application, we have our event handler and the SQS polar. The polar is going to do long polling on the queue and whenever it encounters a message is going to pass it inside of a message envelope to the respective handler where we can proceed to do whatever business logic we need. So finally, let's start our application. You can see everything is up and running inside of our app host. If I go into my distributed traces, I can already see a trace from the orders processor and this is my polar working behind the scenes trying to access some messages from this queue. This is going to take 20 seconds which is the default wait time before the polar gives up and then we can see the remaining spans in this trace and here's a request to our SQS instance inside of the AWS cloud. Now I'm going to jump into Postman and send a post request to my orders API to create some orders. So let's hit send. And we of course land on the breakpoint inside of our single API endpoint where we are going to publish our message. So if I press continue, I expect us to fairly quickly hit the breakpoint in the message handler, which is exactly what happens. And here I'm going to just press continue. There's nothing too interesting here. We're just logging some processing and simulating this with a delay. So I'll press continue. And for good measure, I'm going to remove the breakpoints and then send another request. So I'll send a request and you can see this completes. Our message handler is going to execute behind the scenes. And what I want to show you is the distributed traces for this flow. So here's the post request to the orders API. And you can see what's going on inside. We are basically routing some message to an AWS service. It turns out that this is SNS. So this is going to get published to the SNS instance that we configured through our app settings. And again, a reminder that this was all nicely configured using CDK and some C sharp code. If we go back, we can see a structured log right after, which is pointing to our orders processor component. This is actually a trace from AWS messaging, which allows us to see when we process the message. We can also see the individual structured logs for when we receive the message and when we completed processing which is basically one second later and if i click into the 
parent span and go down to the links, I should be able to see the connected span, which is our initial publish to AWS SNS. So if I click the link, I'll be navigated to this span here, which represents my publishing step. I think it's awesome to see the AWS team shipping some useful stuff for .NET Aspire, which allows us to really have a lot of choices when it comes to how we want to deploy our .NET Aspire applications. In the previous videos on this channel, I showed you how you can deploy your .NET Aspire apps to Azure. I showed you how you can use the Docker Publisher to generate a Docker Compose YAML file that you can deploy on some VPS, for example. And now we have our third option, which is using the AWS cloud services. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video on how to deploy a .NET Aspire application to AWS and kind of complete the circle. And if you want to grab the source code for this video, you can do so completely for free from the pinned comment that's going to be right below this video. We use the AWS CDK, the Cloud Development Kit, as the infrastructure as code solution to define our AWS components. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go ahead and watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so that this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.